Stress is a feeling of emotional or physical tension that results from a stressor. It can come from any event or thought that makes you feel frustrated, angry, or nervous. Stress is your body's reaction to the stressor. Your body reacts in one of three ways, fight, flight, or freeze. Fight is when you think you can overpower the danger. Flight is simply when your body thinks it can outrun the danger. And freeze is when playing dead is your best option. You may notice that within yourself, you are more prone to one of these responses. And I can guarantee you that fight is not my first response, even if it's not physical but emotional. Our bodies don't know the difference between physical and emotional stress. The response of our autonomic nervous system and neurochemical cascades are the same. So simply telling yourself that you're safe or to calm down doesn't work. We have to do something to signal to our bodies that we are safe or that our body will stay in that same heightened state of stress with the neurochemicals and hormones continuing to de degrade. Also, addressing the stressor, the cause, doesn't address the stress reaction happening in your body. The cause of the stress can be long over and our bodies can still be reacting. A chronically activated stress response system, which is commonly seen in those who have experienced childhood trauma, results in an array of health issues, such as autoimmune issues, cardiovascular issues, digestive issues, adrenal issues, and yes, mental health issues. This helps us understand why we get stuck. We focus on the stressor or the immediate situation and not our body's response to it. We also get stuck due to chronic stressors. There are many things that can cause long-term stress in our lives. A chronic illness in ourselves or a family member, our jobs, family issues, the list is long. I'm sure you have many you can add. But sometimes it is socially appropriate not to deal with the immediate stressor. We might be at work or at school or in a store and the best response may be to just express our frustration later. Sometimes it's safer to hold back in completing the stress cycle. Let's face it, there are times when it's safer for our physical or our emotional well-being or the well-being of someone else not to respond in a situation. So what do we do? We complete the stress cycle. We allow our bodies to know that the stressor is gone. And please know that if we have years of stress cycles that haven't been completed, it may take several times through this to begin to notice the physical calming that can take place. Of all the ways that I'm about to share, there's one that has greater efficacy than all the others. Physical activity. Run, walk, dance, move, exercise. This is the best way to complete the cycle. I recently had someone tell me that exercise is how they get the icky out. There are lots of reasons movement is good for our well-being, but when it comes to completing the stress cycle, it's ideal. Social connection is another effective way to complete the cycle. Talk to someone close to you. It is vital that we have people in our lives that we can be real and vulnerable with. And to be honest, we need more than one. For example, there are times when my husband is tired, doesn't have the emotional energy to listen well, and he will just kindly say, don't you have a sister you can call? Breathe. Intentional deep breathing that is slow and controlled can be very beneficial. This can be quietly done in the moment and breathe in slowly, hold it for a couple of seconds and then let it out slowly. Laughter, it is great medicine. It resets the body. Hug, a long safe hug with someone, someone you trust, like 20 seconds long, calms the sympathetic nervous system and it tells your body it's safe. Let's face it, 20 seconds can feel awkwardly long, so it needs to be the right person. Believe it or not, crying is good for you. Tears shed out of stress or grief actually release toxins from your body. So in addition to completing that stress cycle. And lastly, get creative. 
Art, coloring, crafting, woodworking, poetry, journaling, they all release stress. The best way forward is to find what works for you and then make time for it. What doesn't work is telling ourselves the stress is over and we're fine. Our bodies don't respond to intellect. So how do you know you've completed it? As you've practiced this, your body will tell you. There will be a shift in your mood, your mental state, tension will be gone, and it can take practice to begin to notice that shift, so don't give up. If you're choosing some form of physical activity, you will find it a little bit easier to notice that shift, but again, find what works for you. It requires that we stop and notice what's happening in our bodies and our emotions and then allow ourselves to properly express it. Mm -hmm.